Oh, is Max awesome. going to get the third big screen in a row? Yes, no? I don't think so. I think it's because I joined last. How does it work? I, does anyone I, know how big screen works? It's completely random, I think. Comment if you know how big screen works. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our episode of Boom or Bust, a draft show. Max Chadwick alongside Tate Sigworth and Nick Miriam breaking down another scouting report in Texas A&M defensive lineman, DeMarvin Leal. We're going over strengths, weaknesses, where he ranks for us on our boards, give player comps and what NFL teams he might fit. Uh, before we start the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Of course, be sure to follow our Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Boom or Bust Draft, or on YouTube, anywhere you get your podcast. Check out the merch store. Also, please continue supporting us because support for us, oh, there it is, is right there, Manscaped. Uh, the sun's out, bums are out, and hopefully your pubes are not out. Also, flip-flop season is upon us, and you're out here with those post-pandemic toenails. Don't worry, our friends at Manscaped have you covered. They just launched their fourth-generation performance package and their Shears 2.0 nail grooming kit. Join the Manscaped movement by going to manscaped.com wow. for 20% off and free shipping with the code BOOMERBUST, all caps, no spaces, BOOMERBUST. I didn't even know they had a nail clipping kit, guys. We got, this is brand new to me. Yeah, we haven't even gotten that yet. Like, damn, I can't wait for, for Dominic to send that stuff. Uh, that would be really exciting. So, again, 20% off, free <laughs> shipping with the promo code BOOMERBUST. That is BOOMERBUST, all caps, no spaces, for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Tame that summer swamp in your pants with manscaped so let's go over texas a&m defensive lineman demarvin leal he's going to be a junior this year he's six foot four 290 pounds former five-star recruit number 16 overall and the number two defensive tackle in 2019 coming out of texas and in two years he has four and a half sacks 12 and a half tackles for loss one forced fumble one fumble recovery one interception and three pass breakups. So, Nick, let's start with you. When you watch Marvin Leal, what do you like the most? Well, he's just got this edge rusher movements down, right, for a guy at his size. We, talk, we talked about before the show whether we're going to list him as an edge or interior guy, and he did play more edge rush snaps last year, which I didn't really uh, think was even a thing. I thought he was a guy who was converting from interior to edge. But he has – I don't know if he's, like, particularly fast – or particularly twitchy, but he has the ability to make the right, you know, he has the right speed to make it work on the edge. Um, I don't think he's particularly a technical player either, but he was productive as an edge rusher on the outside last year. Um, he's more natural as hand dirt. He's got the long arms. I think he has natural bend. I think when he gets around the edge, he can kind of get under guys and make his way to the quarterback. That's been disputed. Um, he, ex he has explosives off the ball. There's like, he's toolsy. Um, and it's just, it's a weird comparison because normally with these type of players, you want them more to play on the interior, but I'm not certain that he's really the interior type. It's it's hard to explain. Like he just, he moves like an edge rusher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, but he's not like, I, it's hard to explain. Like he's just a dominantly powerful football player who just makes things work from the outside of the off, of, beats tackles and gets things done. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's a tough one Very specific, I really like <laughs> that might be my worst like positives I've ever done but like I really like I don't I don't know like I just he is confusing he, yeah <laughs> um yeah confusing uh is he an interior is he an edge uh the positional versatility is good you can move him around he can you know rush basically every gap play most techniques which is a, a useful tool in the NFL to have uh, he's got a ton of size, good power, 6'4", 290, uh, just a lot of power for the frame. I think maybe sometimes he relies on it too much, but he can really push guys back with that power. Um, I think for his size, he's a pretty fluid mover. Like he's 290 pound edge, which is like above the average weight by like 20 pounds, I think. Um, but he moves well for his size, which is why he plays pretty well on the edge. And also, uh, Max, you mentioned it, five-star recruit, pedigree. Can't, you know, can't we can't slide that by. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'm lower than these two on him, but uh, there are things to like, certainly for Leo. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned like he's confusing. I actually think that's a great thing for him because he is so versatile. I mean, he's, you could play edge or defensive tackles, 290 pounds. But to me, it looks like a 250 pounder with some of the moves he's putting on offensive tackles. 
crazy, crazy athletic for his size. He explodes into linemen. Also, he already has a good pass rushing toolbox right now for his initial moves. I'm going to get into um, one of the weaknesses later on. But right now, I mean, you see some spin moves on tape that are ridiculous. Uh, I think this guy has, has some pretty good moves already. And again, he's such an athletic freak. 290 pounds and such great explosiveness. So I'm a big, big fan of DeMarvin Leal. I think he's got a really high ceiling. But Tate, what do you think those weaknesses are for Leal, though? Um, I mean, you say he's fast, but like, I don't think so. I, I, I don't see the speed. I don't see the bend. I don't see like your true, really classical edge skill set. I mean, yeah, sure, he has some moves uh, in his toolbox already, which is good. But like, all he does is honestly just bull rush most of the time. He relies on his strength, I think, too much. I don't think he has a ton of speed necessarily. I, I, I think if he's going to be a full time interior guy, which is where I like him more than a full time edge guy in the NFL, I think he might need to add on a little bit of weight. He's 290. It's playable, certainly, but maybe a bit low. I just don't think he has like the speed or the bend to be a full time edge in the NFL. Um, I think he maybe just relies on the strength and it helps him get by. I don't think he's particularly quick. I I was not blown away when I watched the tape, um, but that doesn't mean he's bad. He's certainly going to be a first round pick, but it, at least for now before the season starts. But I don't know. I, I think he's honestly a full time interior guy. So, yeah, I don't think he's particularly fast, but he's a smooth and efficient mover uh, and that. He takes good angles. It's kind of similar to like what we talked about with Devontae Smith as like a yak player last year. Like I don't think Devontae Smith is particularly like the fastest receiver out there, but he's he takes good angles. He's efficient with his movements and he gets yards after the catch. And that's a completely different position, but I don't know. I'm trying to make a metaphor. But, uh, you know, he, there were times la last year where, and I think this showed up a lot in a couple of games, when teams run inside zone, they don't block the op the tackle on the opposite side of the offensive line and he's like athletic enough to make his way across get the get, get across two gaps and make the tackle off the back side uh which is a thing that chase young for example did a lot last year in the nfl um and he you know it, it's that type of thing that just makes it difficult to kind of explain what type of athlete he is because he looks really athletic but i don't think it's going to show up in the measurements uh He's got great gap control as a run defender, but then there are times where he just looks inexperienced and he messes things up. I think the big the big problem with him is, again, what we've basically been doing this, or at least I've been doing this whole video, is it's just, it's really hard to evaluate him. Where are you going to put him? Different defenses, I think, are going to want to use him differently. Um, you know, different coaches might do a poor job of putting him in the wrong spot. You know, I, I it's weird because he's, like if you put him on the interior he's not super tall so he has natural leverage which is nice but it's not like aaron donald where aaron donald's the same size but he's 6'1 so it's like he legitimately you can't get under his pad level or this guy's like three inches taller so it's gonna be fit and normally i'm not really like a oh he's a tweener we don't know where to put him type i, I really hate that i like versatile players you can move around but this guy just kind of gives me that i don't <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with him? I, I, I haven't been convinced yet that anyone has like a good plan. I, I know it's like really early, but I, I don't know what I would do. And maybe that's why I'm like, kind of like, yeah, but uh, he, he clearly has the tools and I think can work in the right spot. I just don't, I don't know what that spot is yet in the NFL. Yeah. The big thing I noticed when I watched this tape was I mentioned like, he's got a good toolbox already but for his initial pass rushing move. The word I want to see him get better is develop some counter moves. Because right now, when that initial move doesn't work, he kind of gets held up in the line of scrimmage. I mean, this guy is so athletic that, man, if he gets some counter moves in addition to the good moves he's got already, I think he could be almost unblockable. Because he has really played well in the SEC already for two years. So another year like this, and man, I, I'm going to say it now, he might be the best defensive lineman in the draft when we get to next year. And that is including Kayvon Thibodeau, who everyone thinks is the best prospect Spicy. Overall. I'm just dude, spicy I, take. I'm a I'm a fan of Demarvin Leal, but Nick, give me the bottom line on Leal where he ranks for you, player comp, any team fits you got. Yes, yeah, so I know a couple videos ago when we did Kayvon, I said I guess like six. I still I've I've barely like 30 players. Kayvon's still six for me right now. Demarvin's seven. He's right behind him. They the same grade for me. Uh ultimately I had to like I went back and forth. Like I don't know, you know, old, I think Kayvon's just a more natural edge player. And I think his issues, like adding weight, developing, you know, the counter moves are a little easier to come across than what I think Leo needs to do, which is figure out what type of football player it is in the first place. Um, 
But yes, he could be the number one edge player if he continues to produce. Because I think last year at his best, he was the best edge player in, in, in this draft class when he was at his best last year. Um, and there, there are some flashes where he's just dominating. Uh, uh, for me, the comp was really tough. And we saw me like trying to figure out before the video, these guys could test. <laughs> I was, you know, I didn't know what I'm doing here. So I'm going to kind of go with a combo here. Uh, he's kind of got the Eric Armstead ability to go outside and play better at the edge, but his body type's more of an interior. Um, but he's not that tall. So I kind of, you know, Jason Pierre Paul is kind of like the power rusher type in him. I don't know. It, it's a, I kind of like those two meld together, make some like weird forearm monster out of the two with on Photoshop, please, Tate. Um, and we'll figure it out. <laughs> Thanks to Marvin Leal. Uh, uh, a team, and I know we just talked about like, <laughs> I, you need a good coach to like figure out where to put him, and uh, this is like a terrible team for that. But my team is the Raiders because I just think they need like a rotational defensive piece on a team that is going to rely so much on that on that uh, pass rush getting home when with way that uh, Seattle three defense is constructed. I think they really need to be investing in the front four. They said that themselves. You saw them draft edge this year. You saw them uh, sign Yannick Ngakwe and a couple other interior players. I think. And if they were picking high, which I think they will be, because I don't think they're very good, quite frankly. Uh, DeMarvin Leal would be the type of player I, I think they could go after. Um, so as a group here, is are we officially classifying him as an edge? Is that our official classification no, would, on I, our big boards would, for future? I would I have DL interior. written. I would lean interior, but I, I've kind of gone back. I, I would say just D-line. Okay. Um, so if he is an edge, he is like not edge two for me uh debatably not edge three uh so yeah it kind of matters or i can't give you a firm ranking uh i think he's ideal one i think he's like edge four um hanging i don't know the other two right now i like nick benito a lot uh uh, and i've been a brenton cox guy for a bit of a time we'll see how he plays this year so I don't know. I don't love Liao off the edge. Like I said, in the weaknesses, I, I remain to be seen. I think he is ideal one. So I don't really know where to put him on the big board p- per se. Um, I think, honestly, if he is an IDL in our ranking, his big board ranking will be higher than if he is classified as an edge. I know that is maybe backwards based off positional value, but that's just how I think the big board will break down for me. Um, comps, comps. Uh, if, he's, if we're going edge, my edge comp, I think... Going Carlos Dunlap. Okay. And if we're going interior, I'm going Fletcher Cox. Damn. Uh, All right. I know. Um, <laughs> Tate doesn't like the guy either. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, you know, I'm not going to give him like a, a, you know, crappy comp. Uh, um, you know, I don't, I'm trying to think of a bad player interior right, right off the top of my head, uh, like a Russ Blacklock or something who had a bad rookie year. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so that's where we're going. Uh, Carlos Dunlap, Fletcher Cox, uh, very confusing big board and positional ranking. And per usual, I have no team fits because that's just how I roll. Yeah, fair. Uh, so I actually, the positional thing, like, I don't really care, man. I, I mean, this is guy who Mike Renner said this in, in a podcast. He was like, this guy can have like a J.J. Watt-esque type role where you just like play him on the interior, fine. Play him on the edge, fine. He's going to be dominant either way. So like wherever you want to put him, like I don't care. Like I, overall for me, he's number seven. Uh, again, number one D tackle. And he would be my number two edge if it cost my him that. But like I said, I started the video by saying defensive lineman. That's because that's what he is. He's a defensive lineman. Like if you want to put him at D tackle for some plays, sure. If you want to put him at edge for other plays, sure. Like this isn't a guy that you have to put, you know, pigeonhole into one thing. If he is a D-tackle, um, he's probably the best we've seen since, like, Quinnen Williams, who was unbelievably dominant that final year at Alabama. Uh, my player comp for him is a, another really, really big edge, and that is Cameron Jordan. And I think that they are very similar in terms of athleticism, size, um, and Cam Jordan has some moves, man, that are just unbelievable for guys 290 pounds. So I think DeMarvin Leal is a lot like Cam Jordan in that aspect. That's kind of like the ceiling, I think, for DeMarvin Leal. I'm not saying that's what he's going to be, but that is the ceiling is Cam Jordan. Team fit, uh, the Raiders I had there too. Cowboys some, need some help on D-line as well as the secondary. The Jaguars need help on the D-line. The Falcons, if the Texans are out of that quarterback race, if they're, if they're picking like third or fourth for whatever reason, and it's not a quarterback worth taking, I think DeMarvin Leal could be a pick at maybe not four, but maybe like five, six or seven. If they're, if they're all the way down there to Rod Taylor and Davis Mills really win a few games there. Uh, but yeah, that's what we got on DeMarvin Leal. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment. What you think about DeMarvin Leal? Is he the best non quarterback, best defender 
in 2022. There's a lot of people love him right now. I don't know if I'll go that far, but a lot of people do love him. Also, comment what video you want us to do next. Follow our Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Boomer Bust Draft. Leave a review in our podcast. Check out the website below. Hit our merch store, of course. Go help out our friends at manstake.com. Use a promo code Boomer Bus for 20% off and free shipping. So for Tate Sigworth and Nick Merriam, I'm Max Chadwick. Have a great night.